The Carter Report presents Living Victoriously. Secrets of Success from Prime Minister Daniel of Babylon City with your host, John Carter. Welcome back. Our program today is entitled Living Victoriously. And this is part five. This is a pickup from the earlier session. And we're going to turn in the Bible to the book of Daniel, chapter five, verses seven to ten. We're talking about the drunken feast, Daniel chapter five, and verses seven to ten. The Bible says, The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. They were the brains trust. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads the writing, this writing, tells me its interpretation, shall be clothed with purple and have a gold chain around his neck, and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed, and his lords were astonished. The queen because of the words of the king and his lords, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance change. So here comes the queen. This is not his queen. This is most likely Nebuchadnezzar's queen. And some say Nebuchadnezzar's daughter. So doesn't really matter as long as the, we know that she was associated with Nebuchadnezzar because she had seen the hand of God in the life of the king, Nebuchadnezzar. She'd seen or heard about the great statue of Daniel chapter 2, the three Hebrews in the burning fiery furnace. Of course, she knew about her husband who went crazy. She knew how he went crazy for seven years and then when he was restored when he looked up to God. And so... This woman who had seen the hand of God comes in and she talks to the scoundrel. And verses 11 and 12 say, tell us this. She says, There is a man in your kingdom, kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father or ancestor, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, your ancestor, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Just want to point this out. When the Bible says, a son... It means a descendant. And when it says a father, it means an ancestor. And so this is quite likely Nebuchadnezzar's wife. She comes in and she says, I've seen it all. You better call this man because he's a man of God. Let Daniel be called. Call the man of God. When the chips are down, you know what you do? You call for the man of God. Daniel was God's man in God's place at God's time, doing God's work, preaching God's message. What the world needs more than anything else today, what America needs is the voice of the man of God, the voice of the prophet. Uh, There was a wonderful, remarkable American lady, her name was Ellen White, and she said this. I just want you to think of of this. She said, the greatest want of the world... uh, is the one of men. All he needs, a few good men, is the one of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole. Men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. And I want to say this to you. 
when, when the chips are really down, when the writing is on the wall, nobody's going to be calling for a politician. I'm telling you the truth, unless he happens to be a man of God. But in our darkness, we need the man of God who is come, who's going to come to us and bring us the light of truth, the light of God. Bring us the man of God. Now notice Daniel 5, 13 to 16, please. Here you have the great meeting. And Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel, who was one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I've heard of you, that the spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I've heard of you, that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck. And you shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. And so this writing had come upon the wall and this writing was from God himself. The writing, meany, meany, tackle you faster. It was a message from almighty God and they needed the man of God. You've got an amazing meeting here. Think of the contrast. It's like Christ meeting Caiaphas. Two great men, one great in righteousness, one great in sin. Daniel is now an old man in his 80s. He's a prince of God. Belshazzar is a young man and he is an absolute profligate. And so they're talking together. And it's interesting when you read the passage, it's obvious that Daniel is not overawed in the presence of the king. Somebody said this about John the Baptist. He could stand erect in the presence of earthly monarchs because he had bowed low before the king of kings. And so here comes this old man, well into his 80s. Here is this young king who is the very essence of evil and sin. The writing is on the wall and the king says, can you tell me, can you please tell me, what is it? Look at verses 17 to 22. 17 to 22. Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself. Give your rewards to another. I don't want them. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation, but I don't want your junk. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your ancestor, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, notice the words, although you knew all this. He was a young guy who had tremendous 
opportunities. He knew the story of his father or his grandfather, his ancestor, Nebuchadnezzar. But even though he knew it all, didn't get inside his soul. I want you to know this. Great truth brings great responsibility. Great light brings great consequences. You know the great American song, God shed his light on you. God shed his light upon America. But remember this, there is no blackness so black. There is no night so black as light rejected. Better never to know the truth than to know the truth and to spurn the truth. He said, you've known all these things. Great truth brings great responsibility. Great light brings great consequences. You've known all these things. He said to the young guy, Belshazzar, like so many today, maybe some of us, had spurned his spiritual opportunities. And look at verse 22 and 23. 22 and 23. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you. And you and your your lords, your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways you have not glorified. I want you to realize this, my friend, we are this far from death, every one of us. The thickness of the wall of an artery. This life that is in our souls, this heart that beats, does so because of the grace of God. But this young guy... Didn't care. Uh, I would say this, and I say it thoughtfully. What is the sin of our age? What is the sin of America? What is the sin of Australia and Great Britain? Is it not the worship of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone? Has not the world become crazy in its lust for the things of material value. But the God in whose hands your breath is, you have not glorified things instead of God. Daniel 5.23, Daniel 5.23, I want you to notice this passage. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They brought the vessels of his house before you. You and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know, and the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Uh, I say this thoughtfully, not to provoke any of you, But today we see in America and in the so-called Christian countries, especially, the desecration of holy things. Now I'm going to say this, and I know it is true. God raised up America. God raised up America to stand as a fortress for the truth, as a haven for an oppressed people. Give me your tide, your huddled masses, yearning to be free. Why do you think the Pilgrim Fathers came here? To make a buck? They came to the United States of America because they wanted to breathe fresh and free air where they could worship God with a clear conscience. And this nation was raised up by people who believed in God 
and who believed in Holy Scripture. In spite of what people tell us today, who would distort the truth about the origins of America. But I think the words that were spoken back there in the days of Babylon are appropriate for America today and the rest of us. The desecration of holy things, the holy Sabbath, the holy marriage institution which is now being trampled underfoot in America. It is the truth. And when you talk to people about this, they say, that is simply your opinion. That's nonsense. It is not my opinion. It is the word of God. In the beginning, he made them male and female. And so we see today the desecration of sacred things. But remember, the writing is on the wall. The desecration of the Sabbath, the marriage institution, and the Holy Bible, which is jeered at by millions and millions, and the Ten Commandments. Now, Karl Barth was considered to be the greatest theologian of the 20th century, the great German theologian. In one of his books, you have this statement. I want you to think about it. When the holy day becomes the day of man, society and humanity wither away and the demons rule. The demons are ruling today. Why is it that problems come problem after problem after problem and nobody seems to be able to get a handle on the problem? Karl Barth, out of his book, When the Holy Day Becomes the Day of Man, Society and Humanity Wither Away and the Demons Rule. Today we have the worship of counterfeit gods, that all gods are of equal worth. That is not true. There's only one God, the casting down of God, the truth, the mocking of holy men and holy things. And so what happened in the days of Babylon with Belshazzar, Belshazzar, like us today, had received light from God. America has received light from God more than any other nation. Go read your constitution. We're endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. Where do we get it from? We get it from the White House? No. The government doesn't give us our rights. God gives us our rights. In a communist country, the government gives the people their rights. But not in America. The government has the wisdom to recognize the part of God, that God gives us our rights. But then judgment was announced. Look at Daniel 5, verse 24 to 28. Daniel 5, 24 to 28. Then the fingers, of the, this is the old prophet speaking, then the fingers of the hand were sent from him. And this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Meanie, meanie, tekel, you farsen. This is the interpretation of each word, meaning God has numbered your kingdom and uh, finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found uh, wanting. Paris, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. So... There is a judgment, isn't there? He was weighed in the balances. Every person here one day, sooner or later, is going to be weighed in the balances. When they weighed Belshazzar, even with all the alcohol in his belly, he was still a lightweight. 
The Bible teaches that all will be finally raised to meet the judge. All of us. People say, I can do what I like. I want to say to you as I look at you and as you watch the television program, you have a God that you must deal with. You can laugh at him. You can curse him. You can blaspheme his name. You can die and be buried, but you're coming back to meet him. It says in Revelation chapter 20, these words. Revelation 20, 11 to 13. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each according to his works. So the Bible teaches, as Belshazzar met God in judgment, so must we. And look at verse 29. Verse 29, Daniel chapter 5, 29. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Therefore, it is obvious he was promoted by his enemy. Did you know that God has promotion for you? He can turn a negative into a positive. He will frustrate the plans of your enemies who are jealous of you. If you honor God, God will honor you. And you will be promoted. Daniel 5, 30 and 31 says, Daniel 5, that very night Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. Quick, wasn't it? Darius the Mede received the kingdom being about 62 years old. So the judgment was pronounced. It was carried out. The Persians were at the gates. That night, the blood of the king mingled with the wine. A great scholar by the name of W.G. Heslop said this, there was a last night in the history of Belshazzar. There is a last night to everything and everyone on earth. A last feast, a last fight, a last dance, a last movie, a last cigar, a last drink, a last cigarette, a last oath, a last supper, a last night. The Belshazzars of today may make their great feasts, drink their expensive wines, profane holy things, and mock holy men. But there is a last night for them all. My message to you is this. Listen carefully. Look carefully. Because the writing is on the wall. Every one of us, the writing is on the wall. America is drunk. Australia is drunk. The world is drunk. God's holy things are defiled. Who cares? God's mercy lingers because God is first and foremost a God of love and mercy. But there is a line that is crossed and Belshazzar crossed over the line. And nations have a line in the sand also. 
There's a line that is crossed. There is a judgment and God's Daniels will be promoted to glory. The Bible teaches that the day is going to come when the people who have honored God by their faith and by the way they have lived, those people are going to be lifted out of this world and they're going to be promoted to glory. It is written, this is the word of the Lord. The writing is on the wall. Look at it. And you and I had better believe it. Let us pray. Our Father, We thank you for sending us a revelation of truth. May this word of God sink into our hearts this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Today, we're starting the Washington, D.C. project. We are going, by the grace of God, to buy time on Washington television. And we're going to have messages for our people in the White House and on Capitol Hill. There's a reason we're doing this, and Time Magazine has been the reason that we've thought of doing this. Notice this Time Magazine. It says, is truth dead? Apparently, many people in Washington would say, yes, truth is dead. And we can say anything we like because Truth is dead. That's why we have so much fake news today in Washington. We're going to be talking truth to power. We're going to be talking about the great truths that founded this great country. We're going to be talking about the the great undergirding realities that were the foundation stones of the great American Republic. And we want you to support this project. If you believe that we should bring a message to the leadership in Washington, please support us. We have no money to do this at this moment. We're asking you you to send your your offerings and your, your money to the Washington Project. Write to me, please. John Carter, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358 in Australia. You can write to us at the address on the screen. When you write to us, for everybody who gives $100 or more, we're going to give you America's original Bible, the Patriot's Bible, the Geneva Bible. Please write to me today. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.